Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. In last week's episode we attached our XZ carriage and put it onto our X axis rail. We also attached the stepper motor, spindle mount and tried the spindle out as well. In this episode I'm going to square and level this up and then I'm going to install the X axis motor drive. Now my philosophy when building a CNC machine is if you can't build it perfect and you can't um, make it adjustable then you can go back and set it up perfectly. So with that in mind I built into my Y carriages here the adjustment to be able to lift and lower this rail as well as the ability to tilt it backwards and forwards. In the x-axis carriage here, I made this here allow this here to swivel left and right. That gives me all the adjustments I need to get this up and running. So I've done some preliminary measurements here and with the uh, Z carriage over there using this little point here as a reference mark I checked the height of the carriage and I found that it's 390 millimeters. I can now bring it over this side here, right to the edge of my table, and I've got 391 millimeters. That means that this side is one millimeter higher than that one. Now I can either raise or lower it at either end, so I'm going to lower this one here by uh, one millimeter, take it down to 390. Then this will be running parallel. Now it's really critical when you're doing this that you have a good reference surface. For that I'm using my tabletop. Now I know this tabletop is flat because I previously machined it flat. If you have a new table it will probably be flat-ish and you may need to wait until you've fully machined your table and then test it and set it up. In my case I will be machining this table once the machine is running and then I will recheck because things may have changed. I'm not going to take it for granted that because I've set it up here and now that it'll be right later on. Okay, so how have I built adjustment into this here? Well to find that out we're going to need this, a paint can, a piece of scrap wood and something that's a little bit wedge shaped. That's because the last thing I want to do is undo these bolts here, which are used for adjustment, and have the whole thing collapse. If I happen to have my hand sitting there when it does, it's not going to end well. So with this in mind, the first thing I've done is I've released the bottom bearing, and that has allowed me a bit of lift up and down. That means I can now push this here up onto my can of paint there and that lifts this piece up off the surface. So there are six bolts in total, there are four just below the rail here. There are two at the back here. Right, with those loose, this here can now move up and down and tilt backwards and forwards. Okay, so what you didn't see off camera is that I previously measured the height that this rail was before and I'm just going to re-measure it now and I can see I need to raise it a little bit. Okay, that looks to be in the right position. So now I'm just going to tighten up these two bolts at the back. Now I still don't know what angle it's going to be on. With those two bolts at the back it gives me the ability to just to simply tilt this up and forward and that is going to give me the tilt on this axis. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to I'll just set it somewhere, it doesn't matter where I'll just tighten up this one bolt and then I can roll this off my can of paint there. 
Okay, first test I need to do is check the height. And that's looking a little bit lower now. I'm about one millimetre low, but let's actually also just check how um, square it is. Now it's important you pick your battles as to where you take your square reference from as well. So for instance, I know that this here, when it's on the bearings here, actually are slightly tilted this way here. So I can't use this as a reference surface. But I also know, having measured it, the distance from this rail to here, and from the bottom there to here, are the same. That means this is parallel to the rail, and it's this rail we need to use as our reference. It needs to be perpendicular this way, and this way here. So I can use this here as my reference point. And there's no two ways about it. That is a long way out of square. So I need to do some more adjustment. Now doing this, I need to go backwards and forwards a little bit, raising, lowering, adjusting the angles. Now, it's probably going to take a little bit of time, but that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The main thing is you need to get it done. So why didn't I make it even easier to do? I could have put uh, maybe adjustment things on here to raise and lower these bearings. That sort of thing just adds a lot more complexity to the build. And I'm of the opinion that I really only want to do this once. I shouldn't need to do this again once it's all set up. So I might as well just make it reasonably easy uh, without going overly complex in my design. Okay, so far that's looking good. I'm now at 390 millimeters, which means that this is now running parallel to my table surface. Ah, and that's looking good too. That's also 90 degrees to my table surface. Okay, now I need to check for my left and right tilt. So now I need to make sure that this is square to the table surface. And I can't measure it here because this here is not uh, perfectly aligned with uh, this rail here. And it's this rail that must be in alignment with the table surface, not the edge of this plate here. Because if this is on a horrible angle, uh, then everything ends up on an angle. So because I can't get my square against there now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the edge of these bearings, these metal surfaces on these linear bearings. And I'm just going to bring my square up and put it against there. And then we'll do some adjustment. And at the rear of this here, there are three bolts along the top, three bolts along the bottom. I've already loosened those, and there's one right in the center here. I've barely loosened that one, because if I get carried away and loosen it too much, this whole carriage will just drop. At the moment, it's going to allow me to swivel it as needed within a certain range. Okay, well that's looking good. That's as close as I can get it at this time to being square parallel to the table surface. Now there's a good chance I'm going to have to revisit this. I'm crossing my fingers I don't, but only time will tell. I'm going to need to resurface this table, which will get it perfectly parallel. And then I need to recheck for square uh, once I've done that. But I can't do that until I have the machine running. Okay, so now it's time to look at adding this here. It's the Z-axis, uh, X-axis uh, motor drive for the machine. To that end, I've machined up two parts. One's a simple piece of angle iron, and that's the retaining bolt for the drive. 
that will just fit on the back of the carriage here and likewise this goes on the back of the carriage it's just another piece of angle iron with uh, the tensioning spring for the drive but before I do that I need to upgrade the motor on the drive now this is the current motor size that's on it 270 ounce inch and this is what I'm moving to 381 ounce inch motor I anticipated the new rack, uh, the new axes here would be significantly heavier. They're definitely heavier, but not as heavy as I originally thought they would be. Nonetheless, I did buy the upgraded motors. They're as big as my drives will handle. They're a perfect match to my drive. If you want to know more about motor drives and selection of motors, just check up um, here or here, one or the other. Um, and have a watch of that video there. It's got some great information on how to choose a drive that matches your, uh, or how to choose a motor that matches your drive. made a washer here out of this plastic cutting board and it's going to sit between here the metal bracket and here and that's going to reduce any chance of flex provide a, a surface that it can slip over and also just stop scratching up the paint or the aluminium surface here so this goes together quite simply we have here the the bolt that goes in this goes here and it simply bolts on like so. So one thing I do have to do is I have to make sure this washer, which has a slightly bigger hole, right, that's it there. The, the slightly bigger hole goes around the bushing on this plate here, so it can still move freely. We'll just tighten that up. and it can still move. So I'm also adding to it this piece of angle iron here with uh, the spring, tensioning spring. And I'm just going to put this in here for now, just roughly. I think around here will be about right. And this here has a uh, turnbuckle on it that connects to our spring, like so. Now we can lock that into there. I can see this needs to be up a little bit higher. I'll tighten this turnbuckle here until the springs just start to separate. I don't want too much tension on the, uh, on the pinion against the rack here. Now you can see the rack's a little bit above the uh, aluminium here, but it's got full engagement on the rack because I packed it with that 3mm uh, piece of strip of aluminium earlier. Okay, well now we should have good engagement on that motor and it shouldn't jump out. And that's about where I'm going to leave it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it and will join me for the next one when we'll continue on with our machine build. All that remains for me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.